we're going to make pies tonight. Yay. Who has made pies with their Thermomix or paste, done pastry work, that sort of thing? No? I've no done one? pastry work but not pies. Okay. Awesome. Well, I spent the day making pastry and making pie fillings. So it's one of the things that when it comes to doing pastry and pies, it is time consuming because everything has to be chilled and rested and all that sort of stuff. So in order to show you pies tonight, I actually had to have pre-done a whole heap of stuff. So, which is one reason why I couldn't do it last night because I knew I wasn't going to be home to be able to do all of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is it's a, it's, Basically, the Aussie meat pies recipe that is in your basic cookbook. It's on Cookie Doo. And it has short crust pastry, uh, an ice puff pastry, and then a meat filling. Okay, so we'll learn some things about making pastry, Thermomix. And we may as well jump straight in so what I will do is as always happens I will jump to the camera on my my thermix my tm6 and just show you some of the recipes we're doing okay um, now in my week I have saved some recipes show you the one we're going to do today is the Aussie meat pies. Today, I actually did the filling for the beef and beer pie. It has Guinness in it. And Graham said, I've got a tin of Guinness. I love beef and Guinness pie. Can you make beef and Guinness pie? So the pie filling that I had pre-done is actually the filling from that one. And this one I just brought up to show you that is here, it's the little party pies, which are pretty much the same as those ones. They just have rosemary in them as a herb. Um, in the Aussie meat pies recipe, I'll just scroll in and show you. It has a recipe for short crust pastry, a recipe for ice puff pastry, and then a pie filling recipe. So you've got lots of things in that one, which is pretty good. Um, but I will also show you, because in your basic cookbook, there is a separate recipe for short crust pastry and a separate recipe for a quick puff pastry. So it's going to be boiled down to personal preference, um, which version of puff you like. So I said I'm doing the ice one from the, there we go. Quick puff pastry, there it is. Now this is the one that it's very, um, this is the one that on Thermomix in Australia, they did a video making puff pastry uh, a few weeks ago and they did a live. So I think I sent it through into our group. And this is actually the version that, um, that Rachel did. So it's a pretty cool one. I mean, look, that's, it really just boils down to personal preference. They all involve some form of something frozen to hold that butter in there nice and frozen. Okay, so I am not doing that one today, but that is in your basic cookbook. I'll just, oh, doesn't show you on TM6 where it's from, but it's in the TM5 and the TM6 basic cookbook. Okay, so you'll find that there. All right, so let's get started with doing our short crust pastry, first of all, which is nice and quick. So who has done short crust pastry and been blown away by how quick it is? <laughs> has, has anyone done short crust pastry? I'm sure, Marie, you've done it, haven't you? She's um, yes, I think so. Yes, I think I have. You done think you have? I can, yeah, yeah. I can't, I'm trying to remember what I made. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got Katrina's done dough things. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you're going to be amazed at actually how really, really simple it is. Um, now, do you want the view of what I'm doing on the screen or what I'm doing in the machine? What would you prefer to see? What you're doing in the machine, please. Okie doke. That is cool. We will move to... Look at that. There we go. All right. So I will tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And then you can see what's going on. I do have things in the fridge because that is one thing with pastry, whether it be short crust or puff, temperature is absolutely critical. Things need to be cold for pastry. Uh, you need to keep pastry cool, all that sort of stuff, which is why, you know, some people have marble boards for doing pastry work on um, or, you know, a marble rolling pin or a, Rolling pin that you can fill with ice water because you want to keep things cold. Uh, we're sort of fine at the moment. In summer, you have to apply a few different techniques, which I'll sort of explain. You do, but it is really important to keep things cold. So, but first of all, we're going to have 200 grams of plain flour. Um, and this is just ordinary plain flour. Sometimes you use baker's flour, sometimes plain. Um, this is just plain. The only reason I would use baker's flour is because that's what I always have in my house. I don't always have plain. It's, you do want a slightly lower gluten content for pastry. You don't want it to be tough, which is what gluten will do in it. Um, so your plain has just a little bit, it's just a little bit less gluten, but yeah, not really enough to make a difference, but that's why they specify plain, but you can get away with bakers if that's all you've got. Okay, 100 grams of butter, chilled. So I have got that in the fridge, ready to go. And I, as you can see, I have just diced it up into pieces like that and popped in the fridge. I actually always keep bags of diced butter um, in my freezer. So it's always ready for um, doing pastry. So, all right, so we're having 100 grams of chilled butter. That's pretty close to it. Quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Now that butter was unsalted butter. If you only have salted butter and that's all you're using, then don't add the extra salt. Okay, because you're already getting salt in your butter. The reason why you use unsalted butter instead of salted butter is so you can, can control the um, amount of salt for the flavour in it. That's it. Okay, we're going to pop our lid on. And it's just going to have 10 seconds on speed six. And we're just doing it until it looks like breadcrumbs. So I'll show you what this looks like. And they say just prolong it for a few seconds if it doesn't quite look like it. But, okay, if you can see there, whoop, this camera, there. It's, um, they're actually pale yellow, like pale yellow breadcrumbs. And that's because all the butter has been incorporated into the flour. Nice and easy. Okay, so now we want to add in 50 to 60 grams of chilled water. So again, I always just have a jug of cold water in my fridge. And I'm just gonna pop that in like so. There we go. I've just put in about 58. So sort of anywhere between 50 and 60 work. Lid on. And actually, if you can let's see if I can move the camera so you can see right over the top. Oh, no, I'll just probably muck something up. I'll show you when it's. 
And we're going to have 20 seconds on kneading mode. So not a long amount of time. Okay, so it is very quick. Now, what it's saying is to transfer the dough onto your thermomat. So I will just change camera for this bit. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so we've got our thermomat. And the dough is thin bits. Okay, sort of looking a bit like, hang on, that camera, aren't we? A bit like scrambled egg. Okay, turn upside down, give the knob on top, a bit of a turn, and that will loosen things. And then yeah, if you've got anything stuck around the sides, I just had a little bit stuck there. I'll just pull that down. Okay, and what we're gonna do is, oops. Um, I'm just going to shape it into a ball. What I well, they say a ball. What I like to do is shape it into whatever size I'm going to, or shape I'm going to roll it into, is the shape I will do now. So I'll do sort of a bit of a rectangle. It just makes it easier once it's gone in the fridge to rest. Now, one of the reasons we're putting it in the fridge. So obviously chill the butter down again, but also to give the gluten a chance to relax. If we were to like roll it out now and put it into a like you know a pie tin or something, it would um, like just totally shrink back uh, when you cook it because the top, the gluten would be active. So by popping it in the fridge to rest. Um, it will, yeah, it, it will keep shape a lot better, be easier to work with. All right, so I'm just going to wrap it into some Glad Wrap and pop it in the fridge. Um, now, really, you should aim for a minimum of half an hour of resting. You can do it, um, yeah. Overnight, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter if you go longer, no issues with that. If you go, you know, overnight, so it's like really cold, just get it out, say half an hour before you want to work with it, just to let it soften a little bit, or you'll be having to beat it with your rolling pin to get it out straight. Okay, so the next instruction actually just says wrap short crust pastry, place into fridge to chill for 30 minutes. So I just have a block of short crust pastry. Now, I mean, how easy is that? Why would you ever buy short crust pastry when you can do that? As simple as that. So, get that one in. I'm going to get this one out, just let that soften up. This is one I prepared earlier. So, we'll do that. All right. Now, we're going to jump onto the iced puff recipe. We're just going to jump straight into that. Um, the first thing it wants is 90 grams of ice cubes. So again, we're going to go to the freezer. And while I'm there, I'm actually getting out my frozen butter. Okay, so I have 90 grams of ice cubes. Da, 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 da. Let me, I know you want to see the, there we go. I'm just using this jug again. I've seen no reason why not. It's just flour and butter after all. Okay, so ice cubes in. 180 grams of unsalted butter cut into pieces. Again, this is about that size but they've been in the freezer, so they are hard. 
All right, lid on. And we're actually going to mix the um, butter and ice together. So we're going to go speed 10 for 15 seconds. Okay, scrape down side. So I'll just show you what it looks like. Again, it's sort of like our breadcrumbs, but this time it's actually more a bit like yellow snow because it's actually like, it's like you made a butter snow cone or something. So it's actually, that's very, very cold frozen butter. 200 grams of plain flour. Now, I actually have more flour in this bowl than we need. So I've just got then my plain flour because um, when you roll out puff pastry, you need a lot of extra flour. So I've actually just kept it in the bowl. So rather than dump the whole thing in, I will have to actually measure it in. And... There we go. I've got some flour left. Um, that. Some salt. Say so one and a half teaspoons. So let's do a nice rounded one teaspoon. Lid on. And we're going to blend it together for five seconds on speed five. And you know, we're going to scrape down the sides. So I'll show you what it's looking like. So you can see some of the frozen stuff is up the top there. I'm just going to get all that down. Lid on. Now, here's where I actually deviate a little bit from the recipe um, just because there is another very similar recipe that I do. It's a little bit different. I sort of stick with what I know. Now, this tells you now to knead it for two minutes, which would do, and I'll show you what it's like at the end, and then I'll show you what I do to change after that. Okay, now, any questions at the moment? I'm pretty straightforward at the moment. Yeah, just see what it's doing. It's just needing. Yeah, where did I put my glad wrap? Oh, hate it when it folds back on it. So I'm just putting glad wrap down. <laughs> Now, has everyone seen the low carb book? Has hit cookie do. So, there's some nice recipes in there. I think they made katsu chicken um, live on Thermomix page today. So, I did share that into the group. So, hopefully, some of you caught it. Side, it just looks like breadcrumbs. So which I'm going to show you because it's just stopped. 
Okay. Now, here's where it actually says to wrap. I don't. I actually am going to go back here. I'm just going to because I'm just going to show you. Okay, they say to wrap up the pastry, but look, I actually find it a bit too crumbly. I mean, it's supposed to be a little bit crumbly, but it's still just like breadcrumbs. I don't like working with dough like that. I mean, I'm sure it works, but I prefer not to. So what I do is I repeat that step, but I drop the time to one minute. So I'm just loosening some of this up before I, and I'm actually going to add in a couple of tablespoons of water. Um, just so it's going to clump it into big clumps. And I just find that easier to work with than trying to get a pile of little tiny butter crumbs into the yeah, extent. In the bottom of the jug, you can see, it's actually pretty solid because the butter is frozen on itself down there, which it likes to do. So there we go. So what I'm going to do is dropping my time down to one minute, start the kneading again, but I'm going to use my chilled water and just pop a couple of tablespoons in. And he said, I just find that easier to work with. It doesn't seem to affect the dough or make it any worse for pies or anything. But I'm all in favour of making things easy to work with. Yeah, so we'll just let, kind of let that go for a look. Yeah, that's looking nicer now. You don't even need to get it go for the full minute. The main thing you want to do is, you can't see, is it's, again, starting to clump together into looking like, sort of like scrambled egg. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Um, and with the other recipe, the one that I showed you, which is the quick puff pastry from the basic cookbook, this is more like what the consistency of it is when you do it. So that's sort of why I'm more familiar with that. Da, da, da. There we go. Awesome. So again, we're going to pop it on. I've actually put my glad wrap down already. It's almost like little polystyrene balls because you've got the little frozen bits of butter here. And when you want, you don't want the butter to be all incorporated in it. You want it to have those little lumps because that's what makes the puff. Because when it heats up, the um, little bits of butter cause or create steam and that's what makes your pastry turn into puff pastry instead of just being like a short crust pastry okay so so little bits of butter are good try not to handle it too too much and it can get sticky because of the lots of water and butter there I'll put my glad wrap Using your, your thermat is actually really good. It's like using gloves. That's really handy for helping merge your, get your butter together into a, sh a shape that sort of resembles. Again, I like to do a rectangle because I'm going to be rolling out into a rectangle later. Okay, so we have a piece of so pastry, yeah, now you can actually see there are little visible lumps of butter in there and that is exactly what you want with a puff. Okay. 
So, before we jump to our pie filling, I'm actually going to roll out some short crust because with the recipe, it tells you to roll out your short crust pastry, pop it in your, your tins, and then pop in the um, freezer for 15 minutes before you fill. So I may as well do some of that. Um, oh, no, no, actually, no, let's jump. So I will, we'll jump onto the meat. That can be cooking while the pastry then sits and rests. That's fine. Otherwise, I'll just get confused. All righty. Uh, now, they say on here to grease, I don't want to turn myself off, to grease a, <laughs> they say a six hole Texas muffin tray with butter and set aside. Okay, uh, does everyone know what a Texas muffin tray looks like? Yeah, so what I have, I have here, I'm just going to show you, you can do all sorts of things for pies. Okay, I just went through my cupboard to see what I've got. Round pie tins, these are actually ones from the Thermomix shop. They make a really good pie. I actually baked one today, which I can show you. Um, great size. These are oval ones that I picked up at some stage, if you like to have. Oh, this is a Texas muffin tin. See how big those holes are? So they're deeper than this sort of pie tin, but you probably get you know, similar maybe yeah a bit bit smaller volume pie than in an individual tin like that but yeah so that's a texas muffin tin um i've never used it for pies i don't think i've actually ever used it but that's what people do i also another thing you can do with these is make party pies in which case i use i have here a muffin tray but it's actually quite a shallow muffin tray, so it's actually ideal for turning into tartlets and mini quiches and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so you can see it's actually not super deep, but brilliant for doing party pies. Okay, so there's lots and lots of choices, things to put pies. You can also do pot pies um, where you don't even do the short crust pastry at all and you just grab a you know, a ramekin or, you know, a little souffle type dish, put your meat filling in and just put some of the puff pastry over the top and let that bake. Okay, that's what a pot pie is. But that, and if you want to do a big family pie, you can do that as, as well. You just do it in a big pie dish. Um, and yeah, just, cook it for longer or whatever, but look, in my house, they like individual ones. So there, that's what we're gonna do. All righty. So let's jump into our filling. So again, we're on our Aussie pies thing. Let me get rid of some of these, these flour and stuff. Grab some meat pie filling. Now yeah, that, oh, that one's supposed to be in the fridge. So I'll get my meat out while I'm here. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, there it is. Okie doke. Nice and easy. Beauty of doing pies is you can do all the components separately over a couple of days if you want and then just pull it all together. OK, 
Okay, you don't have to do it all in one go. Pastry can sit in the fridge for a day. Your filling has to be cold before it goes in your pie. So it's ideal to do it earlier in the day, even the day before, let the flavors develop. Um, you don't want to be doing your filling for you know, tonight's dinner. You know, at, you, what will happen is if you put hot pie filling in your pastry, you're going to melt the butter in your pastry shell. It won't hold together. You'll get your soggy bottom, all that sort of stuff. If you want your pie base to stay crisp and lovely, you want cold pie filling. So do this ahead of time. All right, a couple of sprigs of fresh parsley out of my garden. Yay. Now, pop that in. Lid on, three seconds, speed seven. We go, and we're gonna pop, transfer, get that out. Now it's been chopped. I mean, I love the way they say that because you can't see, but there is actually, it's all around the sides. So I haven't got a hope in hell of getting it all out, but it's probably too fresh. There we go. We'll get most of it out and we'll add that back in later. There we go. All righty. Now we want garlic and onion. They say two garlic cloves, so I've got sort of one normal size and a couple of small ones. And one brown onion. It says approximately 180 grams, but the scales do not turn on. Okay, so don't ever get confused when you go to do a recipe. I'll show you what it looks like. And it says that it's really just to be a guideline for you because brown onions can be tiny or they can be big. And once you sort of know, when they say 180 grams, you know that's like two medium-sized onions or one of those big ones. And if you really want to, you could switch the scales on and weigh what you've got in the way of onion. And, yep, that's pretty close. So you can do that. But, yeah, so don't ever think there's something wrong with your machine when it doesn't actually switch the scales on. I have had people call me telling me that there's something wrong with their Thermomix. Um, there is nothing wrong. They just really, they don't care really if you only put a small onion in, but it's just to give you an idea of what, oh, did that just move really quickly then? The camera was playing catch up there. I'm actually using my phone as a camera just to test out how it works. Um, but I haven't got a cable connected to my computer. So it's by Wi-Fi, so it can be a little bit. A little bit dodgy at times. Okay, lid on. We all know how to chop an onion. Again, three seconds. This time, speed five. Scrape down the sides. Because we have onion and garlic all the way up. Remember, though, with some TM6 recipes, they tell you to not scrape down the sides. So don't automatically scrape down the sides unless it tells you to. Okay. We want a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, which I couldn't be bothered getting a measuring spoon out. So I'm going to put my scales on. Two tablespoons is 30 grams. Go. Lid on, we're just going to saute our oh, onions. Now, just put that parsley aside. Out of the way. 
what I might do is start getting my, this is my pastry I did earlier, so it's a little bit tougher. This is the short crust. I, I, oh, I did that maybe two or three o'clock this afternoon. It's been in the fridge, so. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bash to make it easier to roll out. I have already taken, this isn't a complete batch because I have already baked a pie using this. Okay. Now you'll find short crust pastry is usually pretty easy to roll. It's not particularly sticky. Not because it's not as wet as the puff pastry. So that when we go to roll the puff, you'll see the difference there. Now they want this to be about two millimeters thick when we roll it out. And one trick when you're rolling pastry is lift it up and move it and it won't, and then you won't be sticking. If you just stay doing this in the one spot all the time, it will eventually stick because the butter will start melting and it will get sticky. So just pick it up and turn it around, that sort of stuff, and it will make it easy. Okay. I might just do a couple of the round pies. Now, what they actually say when we get to this bit is they want you to cut out some pastry to fit in, well, they say the muffin things, but I'm doing these pie trays, but also you do a second disc for sitting in the bottom of your tin. Okay, so... to work out how big to do it with my pastry cutterator. I'm going blind. I'm sure I had it here. Oh, there it is, right in front of me. Okay, so take some of that off. Might need a little bit more rolling. Down. I'm just going to make a couple of out of what's left here. Oops. Next. Okay. Now we're going to be adding our flavorings in. So we have just sauteed onions, garlic, and in olive oil. We're going to add in now a tablespoon of corn flour and our beef. And two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, a tablespoon of Vegemite. They really are Aussie meat pies. And about 100 grams of mushrooms sliced. And some black pepper. And our parsley can go back in as well. Okay, so I'm going to pop in my seasonings here first. So I've actually got in here all my Worcestershire sauce, my soy sauce, my corn flour, my Vegemite. Everything is there. Whoops. Come down we go. Just scrape it all out. It's been sitting in there since I prepped it earlier this afternoon. Okay. See the Vegemite? Yeah. Okay, yes, and our parsley's going back in. And our beef, which I just got out of the fridge and now I'm going blind. Why am I doing this? Okay, so it's a pantomime, you're supposed to say, it's behind you. But there we are, it was in front of me. So many ingredients tonight. Okay, lid on. 
10 minutes reverse speed one. Now, the beef that I've used, they say to use your rump or fillet, something like that. So a quick cooking meat. Um, you don't want to be long cooking. It will start getting tough. So this is just 10 minutes. I'm actually just using uh, the fillet, whole fillet that you get from Aldi. It's quite cheap, um, but it's a beautiful tender meat. Now, if you're planning on making party pies, the re like the recipe, well, the recipe says for these to get, chop your meat into about um, two centimetre cubes. If you're doing party pies, I'd suggest you chop it smaller because otherwise you sort of end up with these big chunks of meat. It's just, it's just out of proportion for the party pie. If you want it to be virtually minced meat, then you can mince it in your machine before you start. So, all right, let me just roll out my pastry for my tin. I can get the jigsaw here. Put the pieces together. thickness and I'm just going to lay that in gently in my tin. Don't stretch it in, ease it in and you'll have less, again, less shrinkage when you cook if you've actually let it sort of naturally fall rather than try and fit it by stretching it out. You know, not too thick because I mean, it is going to have a double base. Oh, double base. And ease it in. So we've got our nice little base in. If you've got any little folds in there, you just squish them onto the, just squish them together so you don't, that's nice and smooth, that's it. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna make our little bases. So with just a little bit of the pastry that's left, they say, you know, to cut it to size. Well, I'm actually just going to, if I push that onto it, I'll be able to see how big the base is. And then I'll just do a rough. Cut around. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just to give it a little bit of extra support. And we'll just pop that in the bottom like that. So to everyone see that we're doing a, a second, a little disc in the bottom like that. Okay, so we've got double base there. Now we're going to trim off the excess and that is literally just, I just grab a knife, just run around the edge. You don't have to be too exact at this stage because once we put our tops on, we are going to be trimming off again anyway. But it's just to get rid of all that surplus. And we're going to just pop these in the freezer so all our um, butter is going to chill down again. As I said, the temp temperature is all important when it comes to pastry work. You always want to have your pastry chilled. Okay, so I have two little pie cases and they're going to go and sit in the fridge. La, 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 if I can find a space. There we go. Go 
it. Okay. Now, while our filling's got a few minutes to go, and off that. We're going to have a look at our puff pastry. Because it is different. Our okay, short cross. Now, the trick with your puff is when you touch it, it's actually quite sticky and wet. All right, so that was why I had that extra flour. So I am actually going to flour. My thermomat. Grab out my pastry and put it down. It goes sticky because all that ice that was in it melts, so you end up with extra water. Okay, I'm gonna pop some flour on the top and flour on here. So you don't have to worry about putting too much flour in with it. Um, you'll get the feel for it. But when you go to roll it out, it will actually roll quite nicely as long as you've got flour happening. Okay, let's make sure. Uh, You want it to be non-stick. They want it rolled out to about five mil, about a half a centimeter. I haven't got a measuring stick. Maybe a little bit. And again, you're going to cut it so it's going to be a nice little top for your, yeah, okay. If you roll, you'll know, you'll know, you will know it's good and you'll pick it up and it is beautifully and beautiful and soft and silky, okay? It's all holding together love, really nicely and it feels beautiful. And I can actually see, you will be able to see when you do it yourself, there, is little yellow lumps of butter visible through it. And that is exactly what you want for it to have a nice puff. Okay, look at this. Let's get covered in flour. Okay, so again, I need some, I'll just get my pie tin and I'm gonna cut out some pie tops. Don't have to cut exact exact because I'll show you how we trim it off once it's on you just get that through it's probably about three quarters of a centimeter I'll just flatten that out a bit that's fine put that one a bit next one a bit thinner yeah. And yeah, so there's enough in it when you do a normal batch. There's you can do sort of the six pies using the Texas muffin tins. Um, I get about four of this size out of it. Okay, get that. I'm just going to pop this this pastry out of the way. Both of those. There, yeah, now I can go back in the fridge. And I'm going to get out my little pie cases. They haven't been in there for 15 minutes, but they are nicely chilled still. Shut the freezer. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to pop this. 
out of the way and here we go. All right, so we now have, this is actually our pie filling. I'll show it to you, let me get my spatula. It's fairly runny at the moment, but it will thicken up as it cools. Okay, I am with this camera, aren't we? No, oh, I don't know which one we are. Um, it smells really good, but you want it to totally cool. So I pop it in a container, put it aside, let it cool, when it's, then you know, get it in the fridge. If you need to use it in a hurry, do what we did when we did our profiterole day. Pour it out onto like a, ba a you know, nice baking tray or something so it's quite shallow and stir it occasionally. And that will actually cool it quicker because it's in a single layer, okay? But I would just suggest if you're planning on doing pies, do your pie filling well ahead of time. I mean, there's no reason why you can't even, if you really wanted to, you know, freeze it and then get it out and thaw it and make your pies with it you're ready so luckily I made one earlier so I will just get rid of some of this flour is here get that over so you can actually see my tins now because everyone see my tins and here is my mix that I made earlier. So I am going to pop some filling in and I'll just show you. I mean, that's definitely not runny. So I'm going to fill sort of to the top of the tin without going too far over. You don't want it to sort of heat up and come sort of boiling out like a volcano because you've got too much in there. But you also don't want to have a big fat in your pocket. So it's a little bit more in that one. I do have a child who's very excited about the fact that I'm making meat pies. Okay, so I've got that. If you want to, you know, add different flavours, of course, you can do that. Um, you know, my, my son loves those bacon, you know, bacon and cheesesteak pies that you buy um, from bakeries and things. So there's no reason why I couldn't add bacon into the pie mix when I was making it. Um, and then, you know, put some grated cheese on now and then put the lid on. That would totally work and he'll probably come out and say why didn't you do that but um all right I'll just show you normal now I have my puff disc here so I'm just going to lay that on top now you can get really fancy with finger pinching and stuff or you can do the old classic that I'm sure our mums all taught us fork okay use a fork to press down and you just sort of, you're pressing on the edge so that the two doughs get pushed together. All right, so you just work your way around. Don't worry, it's gonna, you know, the pastry is, but, uh, it's all sort of bright there. I'm just gonna, yeah, the pastry is sort of like that, but I'm gonna trim that off later. So don't worry about that your pastry will sort of squish out from the side, but we main thing we want to do is get that holding together like so. Okay, so we have to do both of those. Um, and yeah, you know, if you want to brush milk on top, that sort of thing, you can do that as well. A bit energetic for me. I'm doing well enough to get a, a top on the pie alone anything decorative or a glaze or anything. Okay, go round, we go. Can do, as I said, sort of finger pinching type things, but anyway. And then again, just grab, 
a knife, you don't need a particularly sharp knife. Just use a sawing action and run around the edge of the tin. And that will give sort of a, a blunt edge. So when it puffs up, it will actually, um, you'll sort of see the layers at the side there. That's really cool. That way we know it's all joined up and looking, looking beautiful. Okay, so we have a pie. And another pie. Come on. All right, so we have two pies. What we want to do is get a nice sharp knife. And we're just going to put a slit in the top to let steam out. Okay, don't go all the way through to the bottom, just the top so that it can come through. And then I did have a tray. Oh, I usually put mine, I don't know if I'm going to fit two on that one, on a tray just in case they do decide to explode in the, in the oven. Okay, so preheated oven, 200 degrees, 30 minutes. And we'll set that timer. Don't worry, you don't have to wait for that because here's one I prepared earlier. <gasps> Look, it's already cooked. <laughs> and I can't handle it now. And this just, it's cool enough. And I do have a child who's hanging out to try it. So, but I'll just show you. Look, I didn't grease the tins or anything. Um, I just put straight in, pastry straight in. And as you can see, it's perfectly solid. Okay. Bottom, nice end. Um, crunchy and I am going to cut it open so we can have a look and see what is going on. And the pastry tastes really good because I actually cooked a bit of the pastry separate to the pie as well. Okay all right so here we have meat pie. So the filling doesn't run everywhere. You've got your your light sort of flaky buttery top, but a nice solid pastry bottom, which is what you want, okay? Um, look, if you're using a pie maker or something, you don't need to be so finicky with whether you do puff or short crust on the bottom, that sort of thing, because they're a lot smaller and they um, clip it in. But for doing a traditional Aussie meat pie, you always do short crust on the bottom, puff on the top. And once you've done your own puff like this, you will realize that bought puff pastry sheets bear no resemblance to puff pastry. Okay. <laughs> they are, this is totally decadent, this stuff. Um, yeah, so that's Aussie meat pies. Uh, here we go. Very quickly, I was going to show you um, a couple of other. There's a there's some awesome chicken fillings if you like chicken pies, and there's a chicken and corn one from the Simply Delicious book. Which let's see if I can find that one to show you if you like. I do that quite a bit. That one. Um, and you, you can put all sorts of things in pies. Once you've mastered the art of pastry, oh, okay. Yes, you can take to the boy. Does he need sauce? <laughs> oh, also, if you want to make your own tomato sauce, um, go with your pies. Great, you know, sort of white crow, big red type replacement is the Thermo Dexter tomato ketchup. I can 
tell you now, that is the best tomato sauce ever. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, so there's cookie dough. I'm, yep. I'll bring up the, I'm just going to go to Thermo Bix. Because it is a really good, really, really good tomato sauce, child approved, it says. So I'm just going to just share my screen very quickly with you. Where are we? There it is. Okay. Okay. The tomato ketchup from Thermo Bixter is absolutely delicious. You actually roast your tomatoes and things in the oven ahead of time uh, and then cook it. But yeah, you it's you blitz it until it's super, super smooth and you can't tell the difference between that and commercial tomato sauce. It is really, really good. Um, I'm just gonna go on here and find Oh, I haven't posted pictures yet. I made English muffins today um, using sourdough ex excess or discard. Oh, my God. They were so good. Um, okay. Mini chicken pies are really, really nice. And oh, I haven't tried the chicken and pear pie. Chicken leek. This one here, chicken leek and corn pie is really nice. Okay, I you know don't always make pastry for it. Oh, how do I do that? Log in. Um, just use bought pastry. Come on, here we go. But and look, it uses frozen corn kernels, and and it's lots and lots of them. I usually do half corn, half peas, just to make it look pretty. So, yeah, yeah. So that's that's actually a really really nice, nice pie. That one. Let's hear that now. Um, but yeah, I did from from the American page. Actually, that's going to find thousands of things. I want sourdough discard. There we go. That's the one. So if you if you have sourdough discard, I actually wasn't really discard. I just extra fed my sourdough to get it. And I'm going to show you what they, well, I've taken a picture, which I will load up on the page. They look exactly like tip top muffins. They're amazing. So, and they taste like it. <laughs> um, I was actually blown away. So the whole family was. So there we go. Awesome. Okie doke. All right. I think you've all seen everything you need to see. My child is eating a pie as we speak. Um, the others are still in the oven. So I will be making baking them more, more and I will post pictures up for you. But I hope you picked up some pastry making tips which yeah you know, if nothing else just remember keep your pastry cold chilled butter if you're doing your puff pastry frozen butter is awesome um and don't don't be worried when you turn your um puff pastry out of the jug onto your mat and it's looking like polystyrene or whatever. It's what it's supposed to look like, okay? It will come together and it will be beautiful. So there we go. Awesome. Okie doke. And I'm glad, Katrina, you got to stay for the whole thing. So that was good because you, you, it was your special request. So there we go. Um, any questions, anything um, I was wondering, sorry, with the if you use gluten-free 
um, flowers or whatever, does that affect the resting time? Because you mentioned resting the gluten as well. Probably, but I don't know. <laughs> I never cook gluten-free. <laughs> um, now, Katrina, you're gluten-free, aren't you? Yeah, she's yep. probably on I'm mute. I'm a celiac. Okay. You are celiac. I thought you were. Um, have you done pastry at all? Um, the last time I did pastry, I didn't know I was a celiac. Okay. <laughs> so we probably don't want to repeat that one. No. Um, look, okay, what I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm going to jump quickly onto cookie dough and we'll have a look because there are gluten-free pastry recipes, okay? So... If we have a quick look, that will probably answer um, your question, Claire. So let's see what we can find. Okay. Oh, look at that. Short crust. Short crust. Okay, let's see. Short crust pastry. I'm trust we'll see if this is gluten-free or not. I don't know if my search was right. Ah, yes, it's from the gluten free book. Look at that. Okay, it's made out of rice, chia, almonds, arrowroot, potato starch. And okay, you do need to rest it, but not for gluten purposes, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's obviously to Keep have sure. other things happen. It's probably to get things like the starches working and yeah, you know, the chia seeds and things to get it to bind together. So it's probably a different purpose for gluten-free pastry. Yeah, you still need to rest it. So there you go. But it looks like pastry. It looks like normal pastry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I would be interested to hear what that's like. I mean, someone's given a one-star rating, but you know what? When people give one-star ratings, it's usually because they've done something wrong. It's <laughs> Or someone who doesn't normally eat gluten-free thought they'd try it and then go, ooh, that's not right. <laughs> I have seen that before where they complain. Let's have a look. Let's check this one. Yep, there we go. It's another gluten-free one. There we go. This one here doesn't need resting at all. Ghee, nice. almonds, coconut flour, arrowroot starch. Mix all your ingredients, put into your prepared tin, um, pop in your freezer for 15 minutes, which I mean, the same as I did with my tins. But um, that wasn't to rest, that's not to rest the gluten when you do, when you're chilling it down like that. That's just to stop it from, when, when you go to cook it, if it's really chilled to start with, the um, pastry won't overcook too quickly. It will actually cook better. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Um, blind baking of pastry, you really only need to do that when you've got, um, you're doing something that's got, say, a short cooking time or a very liquid filling. So say a short cooking time, like a, you know, some sort of tart. So you would actually have your pastry shell partially cooked and then you would... Do it with things like the meat pies here. That filling's already cooked. It's chilled. It's really just going to be heated up, and then and the pastry mm. will cook. Um, if you've got a really liquid base, like a I'm trying to think, um, yeah, like custard tart type things. If you're doing a big bake custard tart, you would usually blind bake your crust, and then you would set your set the custard into it. But um, Blind baking, that's a story for another day. So, there we um, go. What about freezing your cases ahead of time? Because I like leftover pies. So if I've got leftover something, I chuck it in a pie. Yeah, no, totally. I, so if you want to um, yeah, make your pastry cases and freeze them, yeah. is that what you're saying? Like, yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah. But I, how I, does that go like thawing them out? Would you? just take them straight out of the freezer and do it or well i well again so you're going to want to bake them in their tins okay yeah yeah so i would get them I'll out get of boil the... tins as well yeah 
Well, I mean, and what you can do is you don't have to freeze them in the tins if they if, you know, if they will hold shape. But what I would do is yeah, probably I would free well freeze them in their tins, then take them out once they're frozen, just so you you know not filling your freezer with the tins. Then when you want to cook them, yeah. you know, get them out, pop it in. I would let let them sort of partially thaw. You don't want them to be solid frozen when you cook. Okay. Maybe, you know, have them sitting in there while you're prepping your, your filling and stuff. And then, yep. but you're still going to want to have a, something to support the pastry for the baking. Mm. Because once the heat gets to it, it, you know, and the, the butter and the flour before it actually all goes solid again, it does sort of go bleh. And that's why <laughs> having a tin is really good. Um, <laughs> yep. I can yeah. understand. I mean, look, that. there are other recipes for, for things that don't use tins, but that's a totally different type of pastry that can support itself. Okay. Yep. Not something like short crust, which is such a high, it's just basically butter and flour. So yep. it needs that support. Yeah. Um, and apparently glass... Um, like pie dishes and stuff aren't ideal for for baking. You're you're more likely to get pastry shrinkage. Apparently, that was just something I got told that if you're using a glass baking dish. So yeah, I like metal. So. Yeah, I just got some of those thermy ones, so I haven't tried. Yeah, them yet. yeah, not really good. As I said, you don't need to grease them or anything because I mean, look, there's so much butter. In short crust pastry, <laughs> never but, have too um, much butter. You can never have too much butter. Um, yeah, you know, and that's as I said. You know, the pastry, the puff pastry tops on these pies is so yeah. different to you know pampas sheets. It's, yeah, yeah, neither here nor there. I mean, it's amazing. It's totally incredible. So anyway, it's okay. So. We don't have to wait for these ones. You've already seen a pie come out. Oh, they're looking good though. I will take pictures, I promise, because they do look like four and twenties or something like that. They're looking good. Um, and yeah, I'll do a really nice stylized picture with tomato sauce and everything on them. <laughs> uh, so I expect everybody now to tomorrow to make pies or party pies, something ready for Saturday, okay? Because it is easy. Yeah, just and as I said, you don't have to do it all in one go. You can go. Oh, I've got I've got five minutes. I can make my pastry. You know, do your pastry, yeah. pop them in the fridge, and then go off and do something else. Because it really is so quick doing your pastry. So yeah, and then um, if you're doing that Aussie pie filling. You know, what was that about 15 minutes all up because it was you know just the sauteing of the onions and stuff and then 10 minutes with the meat so yeah if you want to do one like the, B, the beef and guinness one that i did today that i mean it still only took maybe half an hour 40 minutes if that to do it and that was using chuck chuck steak chuck or blade one or the other you're know, one of those sort of slow cook type ones so yeah, so if you've got that sort of stuff in the freezer, you can use that as well. So there we go. Awesome. Have a good night. And if you follow the footy, Thanks, I hope Louise. You Thanks, Louise. <laughs> Thank you too. My pleasure. Thanks, it was lovely seeing go you all. Good seeing you again. Week. Heather, I'm Love loving that you're weekend. jumping on. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, too. Thank you. Been enjoying it. Thank you very much. I have no idea. Well, that's good. You, you're one of my first TM5 owners, so it's so exciting to have you here. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. But, but, thanks, everyone. Um, but, yeah, so that's why Heather, like tonight, you, doing a recipe that is both TM5 and TM6 is, yeah, it's great for you. That, that, um, beef and beer one that I did is actually a TM6 recipe, but there are other TM5 versions of it on Cookie Do as well. So there we go. Yeah. So Bye, Louise. All. Thanks very much. Bye, Louise. Really Thank good. you. My Bye. pleasure. Bye.